Let's get to a conversation we've wanted to have on Bloomberg Technology for some time. The intersection of artificial intelligence that is all the vogue and healthcare, biotech. How do they work with each other? Fortunately, Vijay Pandey from Andreessen Horowitz, general partners here, you're across the bio and health fund. That's correct. So we start with that question because you have been thinking about artificial intelligence for seven, eight years. Yeah, in some ways for decades. And that prior to joining Andreessen Horowitz, I was a professor at Stanford in actually many departments in chemistry, computer science, structural biology, and I was chair of biophysics. And the result of that actually was almost 400 papers, seven patents, three books at this intersection. So what we're seeing today is something that in some ways I've been waiting for for decades. The, the, the cynic and the skeptic says yes. you're jumping on the bandwagon. Now, you yourself have been looking at this area for a while, but give me some concrete examples in the theater of healthcare, the area of healthcare, mm -hmm. where a large language model or a foundation model can, can improve a process, a product, whatever it may be. Yeah, to, to kick it off, I think these large language models are very exciting. And what they can do is they can act as an interface where you can finally talk to the computer in a way that you couldn't before. But it's worth emphasizing that AI is much more broad than that. AI is something where it can impact drug design, where we can develop new drugs faster. It can impact how we think about healthcare, how we allocate healthcare resources. These are things that go beyond the LLMs, as, as exciting as LLMs are. I believe you, you, you phrase it as specialist AIs. Yes. But is that going as far as to say an AI doctor? Yeah. Or are we talking about an AI back office? Yeah, I think you want both, right? And so the beauty of AI back office today is that you can solve problems that are not clinically relevant, but are still very important and still huge top line and bottom line issues for companies. But in time, as AI gets smarter and becomes a specialist, we can get to the more cr critical clinical areas where maybe it's not an AI doctor at first, maybe it's someone who helps the doctor, who scales the doctor. Instead of one doctor seeing eight patients a day, maybe they could see 10 or 20 or 80. That scaling alone would be exciting. And also it uplevels the quality that perhaps we can all get the best doctors because now AI is helping everybody. How does Vijay Pandey make money? Like what is the exit strategy in this world? Because you quickly encounter regulatory headwinds, the need for approvals. And if we think about in the context of, of, of drugs, medicines, trials. Yes. How does that all square as a venture capitalist? Well, what's interesting for AI in life sciences and healthcare is that we have this very robust regulatory infrastructure already there. You know what you're going to get. We know what we're going to get. And actually, the amazing thing is that the regulators are excited about AI. When we talk to them, they see that AI can do things for human health. They want to see how they can change regulations to allow AI to be able to have its greatest impact. So you're at Andreessen Horowitz and big firm. That's an understating it, really. Yes. But there are many partners who are interested in artificial intelligence. How do you all work together and how do you stay in your lane thematically, in this case, bio and health? Yeah, so we were broken into a series of funds. And so I founded the Life Sciences and Healthcare Fund. And so for anything that's in the area of life sciences and healthcare with AI, that would fall to our team. And what I'm excited about that combination is that that space has been so resistant to tech for, for decades. And AI is making such a dramatic change that it could have some of its biggest impacts in that space. I really valued your explanation of your background at Stanford. It made me think about the early work Alphabet, yes. then known as Google, was doing. And even in recent years, the research focus in uh, proteins, mm -hmm. DNA, that leads me to the question of you know, who's driving us forward here? Mm. The academics at Stanford, Google and its kind of legacy work, or, or, or the opportunities I guess your fund's looking for in the middle? Yeah, what's beauty, the beautiful thing about the middle is that this ecosystem leads to a series of startups. People will leave universities like Stanford or Berkeley or leave Google with great ideas and great experience and really great opportunities because they have developed things in these places and now are curious to take it to the next step in ways that a university couldn't develop technology or even Google has lots of opportunities but has not become dominant in healthcare. Is, is Silicon Valley still kind of the center of innovation yeah. in, in the domain you operate? For AI, I think there's no doubt that this is the center. If you look at funding in AI, it's, Silicon Valley is the place. I think the world has seen remote work sort of blossom everywhere, but there's nothing that's, it's hard to replace being in person like we are today. The healthcare context is so interesting because we quickly moved to the discussion around the need for guardrails and the risks yes. 
of AI. You have the AI doomers. The thing that, that we talk about on this program every day is the AI doomers seem to be the same ones that were driving us forward just six months ago. Exactly. Do you recognize that in, in the health use case as well? Well, the thing about all the doomers is that this actually is a new. We are in the middle of a new industrial revolution. And what we've been here before, you remember the Luddites, you know, from previous industrial revolutions, people were terrified of the technology or people wanted to make people terrify the technology because of the opportunities in there. Displacement. Displacement or regulatory capture. And so what's clear is that if you look at previous industrial revolutions, there were scary elements. Electricity can be scary, but no, none of us would go back to a day without electricity. When we look at back at this time 30 years from now, I don't think any of us would want to go back to what we have today. Instead, the future would be able to use AI to sort of transform the world, to improve health care, to decrease costs, to improve outcomes. That type of future is too important and too exciting to, to, to let doomers slow us down. So is somebody investing at the intersection of health biotechnology and AI, what is your pitch to the world? Why does this matter, the development that you're seeing on the ground level? Yeah. The key takeaway here is that just like any technology can actually be used for, for advancing uh, what, we, what we are building, the tech, healthcare has been so resistant to these technological advances in the past that this is the big opportunity to leapfrog over what we've tried to do in, in, in the past and actually bring these technological advances to healthcare. This is literally about talking about saving lives, about developing new therapeutics. And AI is such a big advance that it would actually overshadow attempts to bring tech to this space before.